Okay, today for our daily cancellation, something long overdue. We're going to be canceling mommy bloggers. All of them. They needed to be canceled years ago. I think it's probably too late for intervention at this point. But someone has to try because the entire mommy blogging genre is vapid and toxic. Family and brain cell destroying. Um, it, it mostly consists of women complaining about their children, their husbands, and doing so publicly, of course. But trying to uh, dress it up like it's an insight. It, it's really nothing. It's just one long complaint, one complaint after another. But it's supposed to be it's supposed to be insightful somehow. Exhibit A, we have this article, which has been getting shared on social media a lot the past few days, from the mommy blog uh, scarymommy.com. This was actually written a little while ago, but uh, you know, there's there's no statute of limitations on cancellations, as we have learned. So um, I'm still going to cancel this and all mommy blogs because of it. The title is, My Daughter is Hard to Like and I'm Sorry. All right, here's, here's a little bit of the thing. It says, uh, The day that I realized my child is that child was a turning point for me as a mother. It's the day I started to feel ashamed of my daughter and the way she behaves. The day I started to wonder if there was something wrong with her or with me as the one who gave birth to her and is responsible for making her into a decent human being. Yes, bingo. You know, I, I think, she, she, see, right at the top there, she stumbles on the truth. There is something wrong with her. But then she proceeds to talk, to go on for 2,000 more words, talking about her daughter, not herself. She says, it happened on a day like any other. We were having a play date at our house with friends whom we know very well and have invited over countless times before. My five-year-old and her four-year-old friend were running laps around the couch playing tag. My daughter was it, and when she couldn't catch up to her friend, she collapsed on the ground, pouting, close to tears, and shouted, I can't catch you. You have to slow down. You have to. I won't play anymore if you don't. And I looked at her with a sigh, as I always do at times like this, and I looked at her friend, who is almost always smiley and agreeable, and that's when I knew. I knew that a hypothesis that had been building in my head and my heart for months and months now was unequivocally true. My child is not easy to like. Well, I think part of the problem here is that your child's acting like a brat in public, and acting out, and your response is just to sigh. You're just staring there as you're you're staring at her as your as your child has a temper tantrum, just going, oh, geez, here she goes again. What are you gonna do? Well, you could do something. You're the mother. And it wasn't because of that one event. It was because that wasn't an isolated event at all. Things like that happen all the time, all the bloody time. Whether she is alone with her siblings or with her friends or at home or in public. My daughter is the bossy one, the demanding one, the one making a scene at the store as she cries on and on and on because I won't let her buy a gymnastics leotard. She is quick to cry, yell, throw the kind of tantrum that I once thought only two-year-olds were capable of. She's disrespectful and rude. She's moody, unable to share and overly concerned about every damn toy, uh, insistent upon doing things her way, impossible if things don't go her way, manipulative, always thinking only of herself, and always prepared to tell you exactly what she thinks and feels in that very moment. If she doesn't like what you are doing, she, you will hear about it. Um, on and on. I mean, just, just a long, oh my goodness. It's, it's a long list. This is a long indictment that this woman is publishing about her five-year-old. Um, and she says, uh, later on, she says, for, for those of you who encounter my darling big-eyed brat, you will be forgiven if you don't like her. I often don't like her myself. I am her mother and I love her because I have enjoyed her at her best. I recognize her potential. I know her strengths. And then it goes on and on, as women tend to do. And uh, finally, at the end of it, she pleads that uh, for the public to help her parent by straightening her daughter out with peer pressure. She actually tries to solicit peer pressure against her daughter because she's given up on actually parenting. Okay, a few things here. First of all, you shouldn't love your child for their potential. You're supposed to love them period, just to love them because you're the parent. Loving your child for her potential is a problem because what if she never lives up to the potential, your idea of her potential? Are you going to stop loving her? I guess so. Apparently so. Second, your child is a reflection of you. Okay. Which, which isn't to say that a child who acts out, you know, or whatever, or misbehaves always has a bad parent. Uh, that would be ridiculous, of course. All, all kids act out. All five-year-olds are varying degrees of difficult. Um, kids also have their own minds and personalities, and you can only do, do so much to control them. Um, and kids will go through especially difficult phases at one point or another. I think it's probably different for all kids. 
you hear about the terrible twos. You know, in my my wife and I talk all the time about we never really experienced that. Two for us is a pretty easy age. Three becomes the difficult age. Um, so it's more, you know, three is more of the, it's the terrible threes more than the terrible twos. But it's different for every kid and every family. That said, if your child is an absolute terrorist, then yes, you're doing something horribly wrong, most likely, in the child raising department. Um, to dislike them, to dislike your own child is not only pretty horrible in its own right, but it misses the point. If you're going to dislike anyone, you should dislike yourself. They're taking cues from you. Okay, This isn't happening in a vacuum. Kids can often be a mirror reflecting ourselves back to us. And that can often be the most difficult thing about them. Um, in fact, I find that the aspects of my children's personalities that are the hardest for me to deal with are the aspects that are exactly like my own personality. Stubbornness, temper, absent-mindedness, you know, all of that. That's me. Um, being disorganized, you know, another thing. Uh, that's, that's how I am. That's my kids. Uh, am I going to resent them for, what, failing to be a better person than me? Failing to be more mature than I am? That's, that's absurd. But I really think that's a lot of the anger that parents experience at their kids is is this. Now, they don't think of it like this, but a lot of the time, they're angry at their kids for failing to be better than themselves. They hold their kids to a higher standard than they hold themselves. And on the outside, for outsiders, it's always easy to identify. Um, So I don't know what the first thing about this woman, but I'm willing to bet if I, if we, you know, if you knew her, and you saw her kid, all the ways her kid's acting, you would say, oh yeah, well, that's exactly how the mom is. It's, it's no surprise at all. Um, bossy, bratty, you know, always have to have your way, materialistic. I'm betting that the mom is exactly like that. Yet here she is, proving that she's in fact a lot worse than her kid, because she resents her child for doing all the same stuff she does. I mean, if you do it, how could you possibly expect your kid not to do it? That's not fair to them. That we, we, we have to understand the limitations of a child, uh, which is another challenging of, challenge of parenting, to understand a kid's limitations uh, and to work within those limitations and to not expect more than what is possible. If you're expecting your child to be better than you and to, um, to, to you know, be more virtuous than you and more mature, and to overcome personality defects that you have not overcome, well, then you are expecting too much of your child and you have no right to do that. Straighten yourself out first. Because the main thing is with kids, you know, and this is, this is nothing radical or, or revolutionary, but they, they, 90% of what they learn, they learn not based on what you say to them, but just based on copying what you do. So if you want them to act a certain way, then exhibit that behavior. Show them what it's like. If you never show them, it's like you know, all these parents walking around, and all parents lapse into it sometimes. I know I do at times, I, but I always try to catch myself. It's, but it's the dumbest thing. When parents are mad at their kids for not acting in a way that they, the parents, have never demonstrated. Okay, you want your kid to be a certain way? Show them how. Don't just tell them. Don't just stand there. I demand that you be better than this. Be better. I demand it. For some reason, it doesn't resonate with a five-year-old. Show them. Demonstrate. And they'll copy you. If you're not doing that, there's no hope. If you're not even trying to demonstrate good behavior to your child, then your child's going to be a brat. And you know what? It's not their fault. It's your fault. You have no right to be angry at them. You really don't. 100% your fault. This video is sponsored by BlinkSale, the revolutionary invoicing software for contractors and small businesses. Spend less time billing and more time making bank with BlinkSale. Get a free trial at the link in the video description.